You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane and the Top 10 Gardener Podcast. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week with your garden questions. What are people talking about? Gardening is here. The spring season, gardeners have been pent up way too long. It's been too cold, windy, snowy, sleety, and they want to be outside. It's Mm -hmm. kind of nice to be, you can kind of feel that energy on the floor of the garden center. So they're just perusing all two acres, looking out and looking. Just, just not because they need fruit trees or <laughs> berries or fruit flowers or evergreens or they just want to take it all in and yeah, be outdoors. Definitely. So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Always good to be back. So how are your gardens? There, you know, I love spring because I love to see things wake up. It just, I love that feeling of it goes from nothing to these beautiful little green leaves coming out, yeah. flowers shooting out. Um, I just, I love that feeling. Waking up. Yeah. A, a fresh, a new, a spring beginning. Yes, definitely. What kind of garden questions we got this week? Well, speaking of cold and things coming out. Okay. <laughs> so John put in a new um, Texas privet in his yard. Yeah. Uh, it had a lot of new growth on it. It was looking happy. Yeah. Well, that little blast of cold. You saw it coming Got out. it. So he wants to know, got some damage to it. Yeah. Should he trim it back now? Should he wait to trim it back to make sure we're past the cold? And how far do you trim it back? Yeah, John, so don't worry. Don't stress. The plant knows how to recover by itself. I would say too much intervention from a gardener can do more damage than good. I would wait. See where the leaf buds are. So some of the leaves were sacrificed. It had some black. And the frost damage looks like it had tender new growth. And it's so tender and so new that that frost came and it, if it's a it's a shock. And so it goes from vibrant green to black. It looks like someone took a big lighter to it, just kind of burned the foliage. That's frost damage. It can happen on more than just privets. It can happen on fruit trees and mm-hmm. just whatever. Anything new, that brand new growth. And it can happen now through the end of April, really. And so what I recommend <coughs> is don't overcorrect. Don't try to try to make it healthier right away. Let it adjust. And so all that energy coming up from the roots of spring, they are still going to keep coming. It might have to relief or rebud some, but if you start cutting on it now, you might take off more than the plant would like. Let's see where that new growth comes. And in two, three, four weeks, now go ahead and clean it up and get all those, those leaves off. So don't feel in a hurry what you may do. It's going to need some more energy to create the new buds. So it had, it was using last year's, uh, you know, October's fertilizer, last autumn's nutrients to form this spring's leaf buds or flower buds. Uh, Now it's going to have to use this spring's energy, food, to create additional leaf buds or flower buds. So you might just want to consider fertilizing. That's the best thing I can, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. If you really want to juice it. Um, if you've already fertilized, great. Use the 744 on privets. That's the magic stuff. It'll make it go. If you've already done that, what you might do is mix up some root and grow. It's a compost tea that we make here at the garden center. It's liquid. It's like a, like like molasses and it's concentrated. So you put three tablespoons in a gallon of water. You might give it a couple gallons and plants just respond to that. You just take it up. It's in liquid form, like liquid magic and take up and it'll just instantly take it right up to where that frost damage is and start to reform leaves. So don't stress out. Uh, The only way to recover from that is if you covered it with like a frost cover that would have possibly, uh, but it went from nice to real cold, like instantly. So that messes with plants. Mm -hmm. So that's why at the garden center, when you, when you drive by after we close, (laughs) It looks like ghosts are all over the garden center. <laughs> it's not because the plants would be killed, but the, we, we're preventing frost <laughs> damage on those outer tips right. so that it keeps them looking pristine. So customers want to go, yeah, I want to buy one of those. That's pretty cool. So it keeps it looking uh, at 100%. The only way to do that is possibly you threw a sheet over it or something that would have helped protected it probably, but not to worry. 
it will recover. It will recover. No problem. Yes. All right. Next question is from Sandy. She has a vegetable garden area that she didn't use last year. Good. Just let it sit. She said, but now it's covered in weeds. No. Uh, what's the best product <laughs> to take care of those yeah. weeds to get rid of the weeds? Yeah. So the best, if it's small, the best is pull them up by hand. Take a hoe and just hoe them up and get them out of there. Because uh, if you spray it with something like Decimate, you can spray that. It's, it's, it's a Roundup alternative. Don't spray Roundup, whatever you do. But Decimate would be would kill them right away. Uh, but you still got to deal with the weeds sitting there. A dead weed or a live weed. If you got to deal with them, just go ahead out. and pull them yeah. up. Take a hoe to them and get them out of there. Those dandelions have one tap root. If you sever it, they are dead. So mm -hmm. just get some out of it pretty quick. Rototilling, turning. These are all things that kind of help you. But I would say don't turn in your weeds into the gardens because those seed that might be forming, mm -hmm. or you, you just turn them into the gardens, <clears throat> they become a problem right. three, four weeks from now. Yeah. Just take a hoe, get the soils ready, and then turn mm -hmm. the soil, get them, get them prepped, put a two to three inch layer of manure on top of that bed, whatever that looks like, turn that into one shovel's depth, water it really well so you neutralize the nitrogen hit that you're you're introducing into that garden and then you can start planting i mean you could put radishes and carrots and lettuce and broccoli and cauliflower and brussels sprouts artichokes you put all those things in now yeah. and so you're ready to plant in about two to three weeks you could probably i don't know where where uh, what sandy is calling from but in two to three weeks if you're up in this prescott area uh, this central highlands, this is Prescott Valley, Dewey, um, Cordes, this area, us, um, you could probably start planting in two to three weeks your tomatoes, cucumbers, <gasps> eggplants, the leading edge. I just care, can be frost, but you can, you can cover them, you can protect them. And plus people are tuned in from the Verde, you know, Sedona, oh, yeah. you all, because they're planting two weeks ahead of us. So you're the end of April, we're the first part of May. So it's time, get Sandy, hurry up, get those gardens ready. And right now is perfect time just to pull weeds because the yeah. soils are actually fairly really moist. Easy. So yeah. they do come up pretty easy. Great thing about Sandy is she let this, the soil settle or rest. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's diseases that come back mm -hmm. over and over and over, like uh, uh, like vertinillum wilt on, on potatoes and tomatoes. They, that, if you let <clears> it <throat> set for a bit, you, that, that, that virus doesn't have the next crop to feed on. So it just comes back and you naturally got rid of it. That's why we rotate crops so right. often. We're moving to, we grow tomatoes here this year, and then over there next year. So we don't allow these, these natural uh, bacterial viral things uh, keep going. Yeah, very true. All right. Our next question is from Darcy. She's in the Prescott Val Valley area. She says she really wants to put in a red bud, but was a little overwhelmed by all the choices of red bud. Wants to know, is there a difference between them? Is one going to yeah. do better in Prescott Valley than not? Yeah. What are your, what are your Remember, recommendations? Our first house that we ever bought here in Arizona, not our first house, our first house in California. Mm -hmm. Our second house was here in, in Prescott Valley off of Pawnee Drive back mm -hmm. when they had dirt roads <laughs> and septic fields. It was a little... Little tiny town in the early 90s. That's true. So I kind of miss that house. So. Mm -hmm. It's anyway, pretty house. We never thought we could grow as much as we can out there. But right. the, the valley area is amazing on what they can grow. They can grow everything that, that Prescott can grow and maybe even a little bit more. It's just that hard clay soil that gets you. With that being said, Darcy, any red bud you want. And I would say start with, do I want a bush or do I want a tree? That start with that. That's Western red buds a bush. That's the native one. And then your Eastern red bud is your standard. Your grandparents have grown it. Generations been out there. That's a small tree form. It's up about 15 feet by 12 feet wide. It's nice umbrella shaped. It's beautiful. They all have the heart shaped leaf, all of them. So <clears throat> next you go by shrub or tree. Then you go by which flower color do you like? And it's all variations of pink. I want light pink. I want dark pink. I want fuchsia. I want, I want pink. Pick the color. And then you go by leaf color. So there's the standard is green. The native one is green foliage, just standard green, like shade tree green foliage. But they're coming out with a new like, like flamethrower. It's got the new growth is red with a with a tinge of yellow. They've got Merlot, which is bright purple. It's there. Pick the leaf color. So go by tree or shrub, then go by uh, 
what uh, a flower color and then what leaf color and then just go for it. We've got several choices and mm -hmm. uh, we can simplify this a lot for you, uh, but they'll call to you. Pick the one that calls. They, they kind of woo you and go, oh, take me home, plant me. Take <laughs> that one. We are out of time. Uh, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be right back after this. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandmother would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Purple Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. They don't just bloom once in spring, they bloom again in summer. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, and just $29.99. Come check out all the heavenly new sights and scents that are making this spring the most beautiful ever. Lilacs like Grandma used to grow and better. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Top 10 Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Family Garden Center. Listen daily as he answers the Top 10 Questions of the Week, streaming on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. 